the tank engine, has worked his branch line for many years. Oh, just where to stop, Thomas, laughed his driver. You could almost manage without me. Thomas had become conceited. He didn't realise his driver was joking. Driver says I don't need him now, he told the others. Don't be so daft, snorted Percy. I'd never go without my driver, said Toby earnestly. I'd be frightened. Pooh, boasted Thomas. I'm not scared. You'd never dare. I would then. You'll see. It was dark next morning when the firelighter came. Thomas drowsed comfortably as the warmth spread through his boiler. He woke again in daylight. Percy and Toby were still asleep. Thomas suddenly remembered. Silly stick in the muds, he chuckled. I'll show them. Driver hasn't come yet, so here goes. He cautiously tried first one piston, then the other. They're moving. They're moving, he whispered. I'll just go out, then I'll stop, and whoosh. That'll make them jump. Very, very quietly, he headed to the door. Thomas thought he was being clever, but really he was only moving because a careless cleaner had meddled with his controls. He soon found his mistake. He tried to creesh, but he couldn't. He tried to stop, but he couldn't. He just kept rolling along. Buffers will stop me, he thought hopefully, but that siding had no buffers. It just ended at the road. Thomas's wheels left the rails and crunched the tarmac. Horrors! he exclaimed and shut his eyes. He didn't dare look at what was coming next. The station master's family were having breakfast. They were eating ham and eggs. There was a crash. The house rocked, broken glass tinkled, plaster peppered their plates. Thomas had collected a bush on his travels. He peered anxiously into the room through its leaves. He couldn't speak. The station master grimly strode out and shut off steam. His wife picked up her plate. You miserable engine, she scolded. Just look what you've done to our breakfast. Now I shall have to cook some more. She banged the door. More plaster fell. This time it fell on Thomas. Thomas felt depressed. The plaster was tickly. He wanted to sneeze, but he didn't dare in case the house fell on him. Nobody came for a long time. Everyone was much too busy.
At last, workmen propped up the house with strong poles. They laid rails through the garden. Donald and Douglas, puffing hard, managed to haul Thomas back to the yard. His funnel was bent. Bits of fencing, the bush and a broken window frame festooned his front, which was badly twisted. It looked comic. The twins laughed and left him. He was in disgrace. You are a really naughty engine. Oh, no, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Thomas's voice was muffled behind his bush. You must go to the works and have your front end mended. It'll be a long job. Yes, sir, faltered Thomas. Meanwhile, said the fat controller, a diesel rail car will do your work. A, a di diesel, sir, Thomas stuttered. Yes, Thomas. Diesels always stay in their sheds till they are wanted. Diesels never gallivant off to breakfast in station masters' houses. The fat controller turned on his heel and sternly walked away. controller stood on the platform. Percy and Toby watched him anxiously. Yeah, he said, is Daisy, the diesel rail car who has come to help while Thomas is uh, indisposed. Please, sir, asked Percy, will she go, sir, when Thomas comes back, sir? That depends, said the fat controller. Meanwhile, however long she stays, I hope you will both make her welcome and comfortable. Yes, sir. We'll try, sir, said the engines. Good. Run along now and show her the shed. She'll want to rest after her journey.
Daisy was hard to please. She shuddered at the engine shed. This is dreadfully smelly, she announced. I'm highly sprung, and anything smelly is bad for my swerves. They tried the carriage shed. This is better, said Daisy. But whatever is that rubbish? The rubbish turned out to be Annie, Clarabelle and Henrietta, who were most offended. Who went stage been insulted, they fumed. Percy and Toby had to take them away. spend half the night soothing their hurt feelings. The engines woke next morning feeling exhausted. Daisy, on the other hand, felt bright and cheerful. <laughs> <laughs> she tooted as she came out of the yard and back to the station. Look at me, she purred to the waiting passengers. I'm the latest diesel, highly sprung and right up to date. You won't want Thomas's bumpy old Annie and Clarabelle now. The passengers were interested. They climbed in and sat back comfortably waiting for Daisy to start. Every morning a van is coupled to Thomas's first train. The farmers send their milk to the station and Thomas takes it down to the dairy. Thomas never minds the extra load. Daisy did. As soon as she saw that the van was to be coupled to her, she stopped purring. Do you expect me to pull that? She asked indignantly. Surely, said her driver, you can pull one van. I won't, said Daisy. Percy can do it. He loves messing about with trucks. She began to shudder violently. Nonsense, said her driver. Come on now, back down. Daisy lurched backwards. She was so cross that she blew a fuse. Told you, she said, and stopped. The shunter, the guard, the station master, and her driver all argued with her. It was no use. It's Fitter's orders, she said. What is? My Fitter's a very nice man. He's interested in my case. He comes every week and examines me carefully. Daisy, he says, never, never pull. You're highly sprung and pulling is bad for your swerves. So that's how it is, finished Daisy. Stuff and nonsense, said the station master. I can't understand, said the shunter. Whatever made the fat controller send us such a feeble... <laughs> feeble, spluttered Daisy. Let me... Stop arguing, grumbled the passengers. We're late already. So they uncoupled the van. And Daisy purred away, feeling very pleased with herself. That's a good story, she chuckled. I'll do just what work I choose, and no more. Toby the tram engine has cow catchers and side plates. They help to prevent animals getting hurt if they stray onto the line. Daisy thought they were silly. She said Toby was afraid of getting hurt himself. I'm not, said Toby indignantly. You are. 
I've not got stupid cow catchers, but I'm not frightened. I just toot, and they'd all get out of the way. But they don't, said Toby simply. They would with me. Animals always run if you toot and look them in the eye. Even bulls? Even bulls, said Daisy confidently. Daisy had never met a bull, but she purred away quite unconcerned. At the level crossing, cars waited behind gates to let her pass. She pushed the farm crossing, and a horse and cart halted while she went by. Pooh, she said. It's easy. I just toot and they all stand aside. Poor little Toby. I am sorry he's frightened. At the next station, a policeman was waiting. There's a bull on the line, he warned them. Please drive it along towards the farmer. Daisy was excited. Now, she thought, I'll show Toby how to manage bulls. Champion wasn't really a fierce bull, but this morning he was cross. They had driven him away before he'd finished breakfast and tried to put him in a cattle float. They pulled him and pushed him, prodded and slapped him, but he wouldn't go. He broke away and trotted down the road. He saw a fence, jumped it, and slithered down a slope. Champion was surprised. This was a new kind of field. It had a brown track at the bottom, but there was plenty of grass on each side, and he was still hungry. Tooted Daisy. Go on! Champion had his back to her. He was too busy to pay any attention. <coughs> said Daisy again. Champion went on eating. This is all wrong, thought Daisy. How can I look him in the eye if he won't turn round? <coughs> At last, Champion turned and noticed Daisy. <coughs> he said, and came towards her, still chewing. He wondered what she was. <coughs> said Daisy feebly. Why doesn't he run away? The guard and the policeman tried to shoe Champion, but he wouldn't stay shooed. As soon as they turned away, he came back. He was a most inquisitive animal. Go on, Daisy, said her driver. He's harmless. Yes, said Daisy unhappily. You know he's harmless, and A know he's harmless. But does he know? Besides, look at his horns. If I bumped into him, he might hurt uh, them. The farmer wouldn't like that. Champion came close and sniffed at Daisy. Ooh, she said, backing hastily. <laughs> Toby was surprised to find Daisy back once more at the station. The passengers told him about the bull. He chuckled. Bulls always run if you toot and look them in the eye, eh, Daisy? Daisy said nothing. Ah, oh, well, Toby went on. We live and learn. I'd better chase him for you, I suppose. He tanked away. Champion took no notice of Toby's bell or whistle. He didn't move till Toby whooshed him with steam. Then Toby gently shooed him along the track to where the farmer and his men were waiting. Daisy had an exhausting day. Toby and Percy often met her on their journeys. And though they never mentioned bulls, they gave her pitying looks. It made her so cross.
Her last journey ended at the top station. Some boys were on the platform. Suddenly, one of them came running, holding a paper bag. Look, he shouted, I've got a quarter of bull's eyes. I think they're super, don't you? They shared the sweets and sucked happily. Oh, said Daisy, keep your old bull's eyes. She stuck to her shape. Toby brought Henrietta to the top station. Percy was grumpily shunting. Percy, he said. I see Daisy's left the milk again. I'll have to make a special journey with it, I suppose, grumbled Percy. Anyone would think I'd nothing to do. Toby pondered the problem. Tell you what, he said at last. I'll take the milk. You fetch my trucks. Their drivers and the station master agreed, and both engines set off. They thought it would be a nice change. Percy trundled away to the quarry. He'd never been there before. It's steep, he thought, but I can manage. Trucks don't dare to play tricks on me now. He marshalled them in a lordly way. Hurry along there, he said. A bump from the Sagali. The trucks were annoyed. This is Toby's place, they grumbled. Because he's got no right to poke his funnel up here and push us around. They whispered and passed the word. Pay Percy out. Pay Percy out. At last they were all arranged. Come along, puffed Percy sharply. No nonsense. We'll give you nonsense, giggled the trucks. But they followed so quietly that Percy thought they were completely under control. rumbled along the twisty line till they saw ahead the notice saying all trains stop to pin down brakes. Beep, 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 whistled Percy. Brakes guard, please. But before he could check them, the truck surged forward. On, on, they cried. Percy, taken by surprise, couldn't stop them. And in a moment they were careering down the hill. Whistled Percy. The now on duty in the street crossing rushed to warn traffic with his red flag, but was too late to switch Percy to the runaway siding. A slow moving cockerel lost his tail feathers as Percy thundered across, but Percy couldn't bother with him. He had other things to worry about. Frantically trying to grip the rails, he slid past the engine shed into the yard. Beep, beep, look out! He whistled. His driver and farmer jumped clear. Percy shut his eyes and waited for the end. At the end of the yard, there are sheds where workmen shape rough stone brought from the quarry. Then they loaded into trucks, which are pulled to another siding out of the way. 
A train of these stood here when Percy came slithering down. The guard had left his van. He was talking to the station master. They heard frantic whistling and a splintering crash. They rushed from the office. The freight van was in smithereens. Percy, still whistling fit to burst, was perched on a couple of trucks, while his own trucks were piled up behind him. The fat controller arrived next day. Toby and Daisy had helped to remove most of the wreckage, but Percy still stood on his perch. We must now try, said the fat controller crossly, to run the branch line with Toby and a diesel. You have put us in an awkward predicament. I'm sorry, sir. You can stay there, the fat controller went on, till we are ready. Perhaps it will teach you to be careful with trucks. Percy sighed. The trucks wobbled beneath his wheels. He quite understood about awkward predicaments. The fat controller spoke severely to Daisy too. My engines do not tell lies, he said. They work hard with no shirking. I send lazy engines away. Daisy was ashamed. However, he went on, Toby says you worked hard yesterday after Percy's accident. So you shall have another chance. Thank you, sir, said Daisy. I will work hard, sir. Toby says you'll help me. Excellent. What Toby doesn't know about branch line problems, the fat controller chuckled, such as uh, balls, isn't worth knowing. Our Toby is an experienced engine. Thomas came back next day. Percy was sent to be mended. Annie and Clarabel were delighted to see Thomas again, and he took them for a run at once because they hadn't been out while he was away. Thomas, Toby and Daisy are now all friends. Daisy often takes a look to Thomas, and when Toby is busy, she takes Henrietta. Toby has taught Daisy a great deal. She shooed a cow off the line all by herself the other day.